The second generation Vauxhall Insignia Country Tourer swells the ranks of mid-sized, ruggedized all-wheel drive estates. In this Mark II model guise, this car gains a much more upmarket demeanor with greater class, refinement and sophistication. Most significantly, there's the option of a torque vectoring all-wheel drive system that gives this car impressive on-road cornering prowess, especially in slippery conditions. In other words, there are all the ingredients for a rejuvenated product. Vauxhall doesn't have a properly large SUV. Perhaps so, this is something better, the Insignia Country Tourer. Now you can probably tell at a glance what this is, a medium sized estate car with a few SUV styling cues. Do we really need another one of those? Well, possibly yes, when the end product is as well executed as this one. Uh, the Country Tourer's four-wheel drive system is far more sophisticated than its competitors in this segment when it comes to maximising on tarmac traction. And should you ever venture onto something like a light forest track, a 20 millimetre ride height increase over the ordinary sports tourer estate model means that this car should be able to cope just as well as most lifestyle SUVs. Now the result of all this is a considerable step up from the first generation version of this model which was launched back in the beginning of 2014 as you expect it would be. The Insignia has after all become a much more sophisticated product since then. This second generation version was launched in its more ordinary guises in the spring of 2017 and it was well received by buyers who found the Mark II model to be larger, quieter, better looking and better connected in comparison to its predecessor. Given the availability of such a strong starting point and Vauxhall's need to be able to offer crossover customers something larger and more luxurious than its Grandland X mid-sized SUV, you can see why the brand has tried again with the Country Tourer concept. Let's put it to the test. The exterior styling of this country tourer may promise a crossover class driving experience, but behind the wheel, there's very little that's SUV-like about it. Still, not everyone likes a raised driving position. At speed through twisty tarmac corners, this Insignia's lower slung cockpit certainly feels preferable. And it's in this kind of motoring that this model's sophisticated four-wheel drive system will come into its own. And uh, now you don't have to have it. Uh, the country tourer is one of the few off-road orientated estates of this sort to be available in an entry-level front-driven guise, but it would be a pity to pass on the opportunity given that the all-wheel drive hardware's GKN Twinster setup is so advanced. It's a very much on-road tractional system. You have to progress to a larger and far pricier full executive class SUV style estate if you want the kind of variable air suspension package that would make a car of this kind properly capable in the rough. Uh, since delivering that kind of thing at this insignia's price point wasn't possible, uh, the engineers instead concentrated on what could be done to make this Vauxhall more sure-footed on a paved surface, uh, particularly through turns at speed in in the slippery conditions. Now the GKN setup I just referred to was their answer, a state-of-the-art rear torque vectoring system also used by the Range Rover Evoque and the Ford Focus RS. Here a clever twin clutch setup, uh, the so-called Twinster Diff, can apply torque to one or both of the rear wheels independently. When you're cornering quickly, more torque is sent to the outside rear wheel, improving traction and ensuring that there's far more of a feeling of precision when you turn in. Uh, that's ideal if, uh, for example, one of your wheels happens to be slightly off the ground, as it might be if you were taking a fast, bumpy turn at speed. It works in concert with another standard country tourer feature, Vauxhall's flex ride, driving modes and adaptive damping system. Now this not only tweaks uh, the steering feel, the throttle response and on the automatic models, the gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive, but it also automatically adapts the car's damping to suit road conditions, uh, cornering speed, vehicle movements and an individual's driving style. Uh, for comfort orientated motoring, it allows you to switch into a tour setting while if you're pressing on and you can select sport. 
engine wise your choice will be between a couple of two litre diesel options uh, and most buyers are likely to select the turbo d blue injection unit that puts out 170 ps and which can be optionally ordered with either automatic transmission that's the brand's latest eight speed unit or the four wheel drive system i mentioned earlier although unfortunately not both at the same time uh, the manual four wheel drive country tourer variant that the majority of customers are likely to choose is capable of 62 miles an hour from rest in 9.3 seconds en route to a maximum of 135 miles an hour. Now this particular derivative also offers the highest brake towing weight in the range, 2,200 kilos, which is very relevant because in our view this country tourer model will make a simply brilliant tow car. A little surprisingly, the figure drops dramatically to 1,805 kilos if you opt for the more powerful 210 PS by turbo diesel flagship variant that we've chosen for this test. Uh, still, with this top engine, you do get the automatic four-wheel drive combination that really suits this car. And the performance figures improve to 7.7 .7 seconds and 142 miles an hour, thanks to the torque increase from 400 to 480 newton meters. As for off-road capability, well, as we suggested earlier, uh, you shouldn't expect too much of a car in this class, but this one could certainly tackle a light forest track that would uh, damage an ordinary Insignia Sports Tourer, thanks to a 20mm increase in ride height over that car, 246 mils. To give you some perspective on that, the kind of Vauxhall Grandland X SUV that you could buy for similar money would give you 223 millimeters of ground clearance. Still, you won't be conquering the Sarah in this car, you'll merely be preparing yourself admirably for the next snowy snap. This second generation Insignia Country Tourer is a much more eye-catching piece of design than its predecessor, having moved up a class in almost any way you care to name, most particularly in style and size. Now that styling also seems now more cohesive and there is a reason for that. Uh, this time around, plans for this SUV style variant were very much integral to the overall second generation Insignia design. And as a result, Country Tourer spec is no longer an afterthought in the Insignia lineup, but a third model range derivative in its own right. Now naturally you'd expect a few design cues to distinguish your country tourer from a sports tourer and Vauxhall delivers them. Here at the front for example the bumper is unique and it incorporates this lower silvered skid plate. Uh, the headlamps are worth a look too if as here they have been specified in optional Intellilex form. Now in this guise uh, they feature 32 segments that work over a 400 meter range with an exceptionally bright and constantly adapting beam that never dazzles other road users. The differences over the standard model are most evident in profile where extended dark anthracite wheel arches and side sill extensions play the crossover card and they attempt to emphasize this variant's 20 millimeter increase in ride height. Uh, these smart 18 inch wheels are standard and silvered roof rails provide a finishing touch while offering a carrying capacity of 100 kilos. The more adventurous design cues continue at the rear too, with another silver-coloured lowered skid plate separating twin chromed exhaust bezels. Otherwise, it's exactly as it would be on an ordinary Insignia Sports Tourer model. This rear wiper could be more seekly incorporated, but otherwise there's a clean, decluttered look that accentuates the impact of this central chromed Griffin badge. Okay, enough with the aesthetics. This is an estate car and you're gonna to want to know just how practical it's gonna be for your family needs. So let's take a look at that now. Now this optional powered tailgate uh, can be set to the exact height of your garage ceiling and it rises to reveal 560 liters of carriage space. Now that is nothing like as much as you'll get in rival Volkswagen Passat or Skoda Octavia models, but it is a competitive figure by the standards of the mid-sized estate segment. Uh, what else? Uh, well, we're we're surprised that the boot floor flexes so much. Uh, perhaps that's because there's a relatively empty space beneath it, thanks to Vauxhall's refusal to supply this car as standard with a space saver spare wheel. There is a cargo area 12 watt socket and you get the usual hooks and tie down points, plus there's a useful netted area on the right hand side there. 
If you want to carry longer items but you still need to take rear seat passengers, then this 40-20-40 split rear bench will be a boon, allowing you to easily push through lengthier items like skis. Um, dropping the rear bench, that can be done easily using these uh, switches on either side of the cargo area walls, um, a process that frees up to uh, 1,665 litres of fresh air should you need it. Time to take a seat up front where there is an enormous improvement over what was served up by the previous version of this car. Inevitably, premium rivals still have the edge when it comes to cabin ambiance, but the gap has been closed considerably, not only because fit and finish is so much better, but also because the development team have incorporated a few of the design tricks that make top German brand rivals feel more driver orientated. Now one instance of that lies in the way that the uh, console between the seats has been raised and the driving position lowered by three centimeters. The result being a cockpit orientated feel makes you feel more part of the car. Now another example is found in the way that when you move your gaze from the top of the central dash area down, you'll find the buttons for the infotainment system, the climate control setup, and those for various customer options displayed in various uh, separate zones, three separate zones in fact, which means it's easy to find them and operate them without taking your eyes off the road. Specify the optional head-up display that we've been trying here and you don't really need to look at the instrument binnacle either. Although that would be a pity because it's actually very smartly configured. For insignia models that uh, feature navigation like this one, this central part of the dial pack is taken up with a colour screen which is either 4.2 inches or as in this case 8 inches in size. Either way, it can show two selectable layouts. Sport shows a virtual speedo dial, while Touring delivers a digital MPH readout. Either way, you can tailor the display via info, audio, phone and nav options, depending on what you want to see. Anything the instrument binnacle can't tell you will almost certainly be found on this Centre Dash IntelliLink infotainment monitor. Uh, that's a touchscreen that certainly doesn't follow the iPad stuck on the fascia design approach, which is currently favoured by some of the premium German brands. Um, on the contrary, this is beautifully integrated into the dash, even to the point of incorporating this little ledge along its lower frame so that you have somewhere to rest your fingers in between stabs and at this display, which now features a smartphone style pinch and swipe functionality. Um, on an Insignia model like this one that features navigation, this monitor is eight inches in size, and as you'd expect, it's compatible with the latest Apple CarPlay and Android Auto phone connectivity systems, and that's activated via this projection screen option. Um, more familiar infotainment inclusions run to the usual Bluetooth, DAB stereo, and informational features. Talking of media connectivity, we also want to cover the other key piece of standard technology which is available with this car, the OnStar Personal Connectivity and Service Assistant. And now, if you're not familiar with OnStar, uh, let's tell you that it provides SOS automatic crash response, stolen vehicle assistance, and via a smartphone app, various vehicle diagnostic features too, uh, allowing you to do things like remotely lock or unlock the doors, check your oil life, or sound the horn or flash the lights if you've lost this Vauxhall in a busy car park. Via this roof-mounted blue OnStar button, you can also contact an operator 24-7 who can help you if you're lost, download journey directions straight into the car's navigation system, or summon assistance if you're stranded. Uh, for the first three months of ownership, OnStar will also create, in this insignia, uh, a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot, which boosts your phone signal and which can function with up to seven devices, so there'll be no arguing in the back. You'll have to pay for this feature after that though. Plus, the package includes a vehicle tracking device which can automatically disable the car if someone steals it and then pinpoint its location. Should such a theft take place, you simply contact OnStar using a downloadable MyVoxel smartphone app, which if necessary, you can also use to access important vehicle data and remotely lock or unlock the car. Enough with connectivity, what else do you need to know about this cabin? Well, for one thing, you no longer feel you're in an Astra with ideas above its station. Now, true, quite a lot of the hardware has been carried over from the latest version of that car, but it's been incorporated into a fascia layout that, as we suggested earlier, now feels wholly appropriate to the more exalted D segment. 
Now, we've talked about the way that the ergonomics help with this and material quality plays its part here too. Slick stitching uh, distinguishes the grippy three-spoke steering wheel, uh, the top of the soft field dash and door cards that feature classy dark ash style inserts. Plus there's smart piano black trimming on the console between the seats. Getting comfortable is easy, the seat's well proportioned and here it features special shaping and 16-way adjustment which has gained this driver's chair the coveted seal of approval from the AGR, Action for Healthy Backs organisation. That feature alone might sell high mileage motorists into this car. We'll finish here by covering the cabin stowage options. Uh, we're disappointed that the glove box and the door bins are relatively small and there's nowhere to stow your sunglasses. Uh, on the plus side though, there is a usefully deep cubby behind the gear stick, uh, while in front of that lever is this smart sliding top compartment incorporating uh, a small shelf and two cup holders. Further back between the seats is an even deeper lidded storage box, inside of which is a useful USB port. Time to check out another area of this car that might really sell it to you, the back seat. And once inside, you really notice the benefit of this second generation model's extra 92 millimeters of wheelbase. As you'd expect from a car that's now nearly five meters in length, so nearly as long as an enormous Audi Q7 SUV, uh, there's plenty of room for one really tall adult to sit behind another. Headroom levels, well, they aren't quite so good, although to be fair, this Mark II Insignia model does pretty well in this regard, given that this uh, second generation model's roof height is 29 millimeters lower than before. Designer Mark Adams is six foot four inches tall, and he says he fits in here quite comfortably. Just as impressive is the cabin width, as you expect it might be, given this car is now wider than supposedly much bigger E-segment station wagon models like BMW's 5 Series Touring or Mercedes E-Class Estate. In theory, this ought to make it relatively easy for three adults to be comfortably seated back here. Now, unfortunately, mitigating against that is the height of this centre transmission tunnel and also the fact that the rear bench has been sculpted so that any uh, middle occupant has to position themselves on this uncomfortably raised section of foam. Uh, now, if there are only two of you, you'll be able to use this uh, center armrest with its twin built-in cup holders, and top models like this one get these twin USB sockets and heat for the seats too. You're going to be paying somewhere in the 25 to 30,000 pound bracket for your Insignia Country Tourer. Uh, there's only one spec level, so the variance depends on your selection between a couple of versions of Vauxhall's two litre diesel engine and your choice between front or four wheel drive and manual or automatic transmission. Almost all country tourer buyers will be opting for the 170 PS Turbo D Blue Injection Power Plant and using that as your starting point, you can, if you wish, add in either four-wheel drive for £1,600 more or automatic transmission for £1,900 more. With this engine, you can't unfortunately have both those things at the same time, which is a sort of package that a number of buyers might want. Uh, for that combination, Vauxhall wants you to stretch instead to the top 210 PS by Turbo D model we're trying here which comes only in four-wheel drive auto form but which will probably require a budget somewhere around the £30,000 mark once you've factored in a few well-chosen extras. Determining how much extra the Country Tourer package will set you back over an ordinary Insignia Sports Tourer estate is a tad difficult. Firstly, because this spec level falls somewhere between mid-range Techline Nav and top spec Elite Nav trim levels in the standard lineup. And secondly, because the four-wheel drive system that most potential owners will specify here is a rare feature to find on that standard model. By the way, you can't have all-wheel traction at all on Vauxhall's alternative off to potential buyers of this sort, their mid-sized Grandland X SUV. So if, for example, you're a serious tower and you want a Vauxhall, this country tourer model is going to need to be your car of choice. 
But will it be once you've surveyed the competition in this segment? Well, let's see. The first thing to say is that this Vauxhall is virtually the only SUV style estate that you can buy that's offered in front-driven form. That explains why an entry-level two-wheel drive country tourer for not much more than £25,000 is the cheapest car of this kind you can have. Let's assume, though, that you want this Vauxhall specified in a form that's comparable to its rivals uh, with a proper four-wheel drive system. How would a version like that, priced from launch at around £27,500 stack up against obvious rivals. Well, pretty temptingly as it happens, a rival Skoda Octavia Scout 2 litre TDI 154x4 costs about the same, but it's nothing like as well equipped. Uh, you might also look at the Volkswagen Golf Alltrack 2 litre TDI 150 PS 4x4, but that also isn't as well specified. It costs around £1,500 more and it'll give you considerably less rear seat space. Most of the other similarly targeted 4x4 estate models you might consider will cost a significantly higher amount than Vauxhall's asking here. Uh, to be specific, you'll need around £33,000 for a Subaru Outback, around £36,000 for a Volkswagen Passat Alltrack, and around £38,000 for either an Audi A4 Allroad or an all-wheel drive Volvo V60 Cross Country. Beyond that, you'll be into the £45,000 to £55,000 price bracket, which is required for SUV-style four-wheel drive estates of this sort, the next size up, large segment models like the Volvo V90 Cross Country, the Mercedes E-Class All-Terrain and the Audi A6 All-Road. Are there other options? Well, not really any credible ones from the point of view of the kind of person that this country tourer model is aimed at. In the twenty-five to £30,000 bracket, you could get yourself comparable four-wheel drive diesel estate versions of the Ford Mondeo and the Skoda Superb, but you would damage either of those models if you tried to take them off-road. Uh, for that, you need a proper crossover like the Vauxhall Grandland X that we mentioned earlier, or perhaps a Grandland X rival like diesel versions of mid-sized C-segment SUV contenders like, uh, say, the Volkswagen Tiguan, the Mazda CX-5 or the Honda CR-V. Um, comparably equipped versions of all those models, well, they could theoretically be had for the same kind of money that you'd need for an Insignia Country Tourer. But as you said earlier, most people who choose this Vauxhall simply don't want an SUV and the kind of image that goes with it. Having considered all of that, we'd understand if you concluded that it was the Vauxhall that you really wanted. And if that's the case, then you're going to need to know just how generous the brand's been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Now let's start with the country tourist specific stuff. Uh, the increased ground clearance, the extended wheel arches and the revised bumpers with the silver skid plate panels are all things that set this variant apart from other Insignia estate models. Three other key country tourer features include the flex ride driving mode system, including adaptive damping, silver effect roof rails, and the special 18 inch alloy wheels. Certainly want to, want to scratch those on rutted tracks. Uh, otherwise, a standard kit list is pretty much the same as you'll find on any well specified version of the Insignia Sports Tour estate that this car is based on. And that means you get features like uh, dark tinted rear windows, front fog lights, and auto wipers, plus front and rear parking sensors. Inside you get uh, 16 way adjustable front seats, the driver's one approved by AGR who campaigned for healthier backs, plus there's dual zone climate control, twin rear USB sockets, powered heated mirrors, a leather trimmed multifunction steering wheel and cruise control with a speed limiter. Uh, as for media connectivity, well, as standard, there is a Navi 900 IntelliLink system that includes full navigation and smartphone projection via either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Uh, as you'd expect, there's also the convenience of Bluetooth phone connectivity, uh, as well as a USB connection and an aux in socket. Plus, there is a seven-speaker DAB audio setup, although if you go for this top by turbo model, that's upgraded to a six-channel Bose package. But that is just the start of the media cleverness. Also standard is the OnStar Personal Connectivity and Service Assistant Package. Now, once you've used OnStar, you'll wonder how on earth you manage without it. Uh, you'll never be stranded after a breakdown or an accident. And almost anything you, you might ever need to know about any journey you ever take will be just a button press away. Uh, you can even use it to book hotel rooms. 
The OnStar package also allows you to create in your car a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot. Plus, there's a smartphone app that can remotely lock or unlock the doors, check your oil life, or if you've lost your Vauxhall in a busy car park, it can sound the horn or flash the lights. Plus, if your insignia is stolen, OnStar can disable it so it can't be started. In summary, no other rival has a system that can match the range of services that OnStar has to offer. Just bear in mind that there is a cost to use the 4G Wi-Fi after the first three months of ownership and that'll vary depending on the service provider you use and the amount of data you want. And there is also a cost to continue with the whole OnStar system after year one. Uh, so expect a fee of around £90 a year, excluding Wi-Fi. Enough, though, on the standard spec. What about options? Well, we have a number of the key things that you'll probably want fitted on this test car. Uh, the Intellilux LED matrix headlights we've been trying here, for example. Uh, lamps able to constantly adjust their beam for maximum illumination that doesn't dazzle other road users. Uh, this car also features a powered tailgate with a sensor, which allows you to lift it with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper if uh, you're approaching the car laden down with bags. Uh, this car's sports-style leather upholstered front seats would also be nice to have, as would a head-up display and the special 8-inch colour instrument binnacle monitor. Most buyers will probably also go for one of the optional winter packs, which give you things like heated front seats, a heated steering wheel and a heated windscreen. Two more pretty essential extras include the 17-inch spare wheel and the useful flex organiser pack that gives the cargo area side rails with hooks, a side net pocket and a 3D storage net. Uh, you may well also want the optional towing pack with its retractable tow bar. If you still have more to spend, your dealer will offer you a full panoramic glass roof, keyless entry, a powered ventilated driver's seat and an optional wireless charger tray to more easily top up your mobile phone. Uh, what else? Well, you can downgrade your wheel size to 17 inches to improve efficiency. And we should also mention that unless you want your insignia to be finished in a solid Aegean blue colour, you're going to have to pay extra for the paintwork. Now, this car features lava red brilliant paintwork and there are various two-coat metallic, pearlescent and premium shades. Uh, plus, there's a top tri-coat abalone white option. Enough on options, let's look at safety. Now, no car in this class can get by without standard, sophisticated camera-based safety systems these days. And sure enough, all insignias feature what Vauxhall calls its Driving Assistance Pack 1 package that works via a forward-facing camera, which is mounted behind the rearview mirror. Now, this uh, facilitates the brand's forward collision alert with automatic city emergency braking system. And that's an autonomous braking setup that works at low city speeds of up to 25 miles an hour uh, to scan the road ahead as you drive in search of vehicles that might represent a potential accident hazard. If one's detected, you'll be warned. Uh, now, if you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, the same camera also drives two further standard features, um, lane departure warning with lane assist, and that will alert you if you're drifting over lane markings and will imperceptibly steer you back into position and a following distance indicator will help you to maintain a safe gap to the vehicle in front. Plus, the navigation package also includes a traffic sign recognition system which pictures speed signs as you pass them and displays them on the dash. As for more common safety stuff, well, there's a pedestrian-friendly bonnet and all the usual inclusions, uh, things like tire pressure monitoring, uh, ice fix child seat fastenings and twin front side and curtain airbags, although no driver's knee bag. Uh, electronic safety features include an ABS system with brake assist and hydraulic brake assist fade to help in emergency stops and those are advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. There's also hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And the ESP stability control system includes cornering brake control, straight line stability control and a rollover mitigation system. 
Now that is a pretty comprehensive suite of safety equipment, but if you want to spend more, then there are three further options. Uh, go for what Vauxhall calls its Driving Assistance Pack 2, and you get a cruise control system which will use a radar to automatically keep your safe distance behind the car in front on the highway. Uh, if your Insignia has an auto gearbox, then this setup will even bring the car to a stop and then automatically start it off again if you come across a traffic queue. Even more sophisticated are the Driving Assistance Pack 3 and Driving Assistance Pack 4 packages, and the brand makes those available on insignias fitted out with navigation. Uh, both include the same three key camera-driven features, rear cross-traffic alert, now that warns you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space, um, lane change assist with side blind spot alert, now that warns you if on the move uh, you're just about to dangerously pull out to overtake in front of another vehicle, and the advanced park assist system. Now that is there to help you to find a parking space and then automatically steer you into it. As for the difference between those final two packs, well pack three gives you a 360 degree panoramic camera system while with pack four it's a simple rear view camera. When it comes to questions of running cost efficiency, this Country Tourer Insignia model suffers a little in comparison, both with its showroom stablemates and perhaps more significantly with other class rivals. To give you some perspective on that, uh, let's take the returns of an entry-level two-wheel drive version with 170 PS and manual transmission, 51.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 145 grams per kilometre. And that's easily bettered in this class by a four-wheel drive Volkswagen Passat Alltrack with 190 PS and automatic transmission. Vauxhall really needs to try harder here. Let's cover off the other country tour and model figures so you've got them. Go for a two-wheel drive 170 PS Turbo D variant with automatic transmission and you're looking at 47.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 157 grams per kilometre. For the alternative four-wheel drive 170 PS Turbo D variant with manual transmission and the stats read 43.5 mpg and 172 grams per kilometre. And finally, the top 210 PS by Turbo 4x4 Auto version we're trying here records 39.8 mpg and 188 grams per kilometre. It'll all make quite a difference if you're looking to possibly upgrade from a conventional sports tourer model into this country tourer variant. Uh, to give you an idea of just how much, let's tell you that an ordinary front-driven 2.0-litre turbo D 170 PS diesel automatic sports tourer model has a CO2 reading of 150 grams per kilometre, which puts it into band H with a BIK rating of 32% and a first-year VED payment of £200. The 172 grams per kilometre CO2 reading applicable to a country tour model with the same engine but four-wheel drive and manual transmission means a band J classification where the benefiting kind rating of 36% and a first year VED payment of £800. On to maintenance issues. Uh, all engines share the same one year or 20,000 mile service intervals and you can download a provided My Vauxhall app onto your phone which sets up reminders about servicing and MOTs and helps you to find the most convenient garage to your location. If anything goes wrong that's not supposed to, uh, you're covered by a three year 60,000 mile warranty and that includes Vauxhall roadside assistance breakdown cover. Now this can be extended by up to two years and up to a maximum of 100,000 miles at extra cost. Other financial considerations include how much you'll pay for insurance. Uh, the 170 PS Country Tourer models are rated at Group 20E, while it's Group 21E for this 210 PS variant. As for residual value, well, that should be quite competitive. Uh, if you would go for a 170 PS Turbo D 4x4 variant and cover 36,000 miles over three years, then your car would retain 43% of its original value. The Vauxhall Insignia Country Tourer is a welcome addition to a market that has room for a talented mainstreamer with an attractive asking price. Many of this sector's non-premium makers have hesitated to bring us cars of this kind because they were clearly so lifestyle orientated and by extension very clearly badge orientated. Vauxhall though has built a model that may well have the talent to convince a sort of customer who might never have previously considered an insignia. 
The styling is not too overblown, the media connectivity provision is excellent and the four-wheel drive system is right on the money for the kind of use this model will see. Our only issue lies in efficiency figures that lag behind the rivals in its segment. You may well feel that you could live with that though. After all, the volume version of this model still manages to average nearly 45 mpg in regular use. Otherwise, there's very little that you won't like about the Country Tourer. Other brands have shown how a capable estate of this sort can be a thinking person's alternative to a mid-sized SUV. And this insignia delivers that concept with more technology and lower prices that probably have plenty of room for negotiation. That makes sense to us. If it adds up for you too, then an escape to the country could be one of the cleverer decisions you've made in a while.